What up homies, welcome back to another Achievements Are Impossible. This time, we're hopping into Escape Simulator. As the name suggests, the game is about escape rooms where we solve puzzles on top of puzzles to escape. The game has 25 achievements all based around collectibles, item play, and completing levels. We start off by learning how to grab and collect objects, and then we're sent into the tutorial, a bedroom to escape. We press a button by the door that lets us know there's a key under the pillow, and we grab that. We find some secret tokens around the room, giving us our first achievement, first in collection. We then realize the button by the door is the hint button. We used it again, and it lets us know to use the key on the toy car, which reveals another key. We use it to unlock the door, escaping our first room, which gives us the achievement Escape Room. There are three main worlds in this game, with five rooms in each world. In each room there are eight secret tokens. We managed to find five tokens before finishing the room, so I stayed to find the remaining three. During this time, I threw an item across the room, unlocking good throw. We head into the first world, Labyrinth of Egypt, where in the first room, we managed to destroy every vase, unlocking Destroyer. But in terms of the puzzle, we find various pieces that put together a pyramid on the center column. This gives us a key to one of the three doors. After using the key on the first door, we are met with a maze to solve for the second door key. Through the second door, we are met with a similar type of puzzle. Once we solved this, we unlocked the final door key, which was our escape. In the Chamber of Danger, we picked up a skull and put it in the fire, which unlocked Uber Skull. I think not to spoil the whole game in case anyone had any interest in playing it, I'll only be describing the solution to one of the rooms for each world, and if any achievements come along the way, I'll give some more context. But please assume that I'll be collecting every token from each room, and that I've completed each room under 15 minutes for the speedrun trophy. So fast forwarding to the final room in the labyrinth, we beat the room, earning Egypt Escapist, and collect our last set of tokens for the world, unlocking Egypt Collector. The next world is Adrift in Space, where we start off in the room having no gravity, no power, and the door being locked. We break a piece of glass for a security wrench, and find a section on the floor for the power system. We activate the correct subsystems and the gravity is restored. We then take everything out of the cabinets which gave us a few batteries and items to unlock the administrator computer. We unlock the computer and start the emergency door protocol. This allows us to find a panel on the wall by the door. When we insert all the batteries into it, we override the door system, allowing us to escape. There's a few achievements on this level to get, so we replayed it, and we started off by looking directly into the sun. This gave us Don't Look at the Sun. Then, we picked up every mug before beating the level, so that they didn't break during the gravity change. This unlocked Holy Mug. And lastly, we picked up a couple batteries and put them into the Robo Toy, and powered it on a few times for some secret dialogue, unlocking Mystic Toy. Another room on this world is called The Lab. Eventually, we end up using a blowtorch to break open some vents. After that, we found if we turn the blowtorch on and leave it in the sink, and then turn the sink on, it puts out the fire, giving us safety precautions. We also changed our skin tone to yellow and picked up the donut on this level, which unlocks dough, a classic Simpsons reference. On the last mission, we escape through a rocket of some sort and beat the level, unlocking Space Escapist. We also collected our last set of tokens, unlocking Space Collector. The next world is Edgewood Mansion. We start off in a therapist looking room where we find a newspaper that aligns with the combination for some swinging arms. After solving these arms, it gives us a key. We use some books and some Rorschach tests to find combinations to locks and a safe. And lastly, we learn a bit about a patient and about phrenology to unlock the final phrenology skull giving us the key to exit the room. Along the way, we also found a top hat, and upon putting it on the coat hangers, we unlocked Great Tower for building a tower of items. I actually had some help on this level, and found that if you take one of the pages of paper from the drawer, and type as much as you possibly can onto one of the pieces of paper in the typewriter, we unlock Writer. 
We also unlocked Escape Together for completing a room in the cooperative mode. We head into the last room for this world and look straight up the center of the room, giving us Jack Beanstalk. After completing the room, we unlock Victorian Escapist. After that, we collect the last set of tokens, unlocking Victorian Collector. Now that we are done with all the room-specific achievements, we do need to backtrack for the final few. We head over to one of the labyrinth levels. We pick up a bunch of objects, and we start throwing them out of our inventory as fast as we can. Now since a majority of the objects were breakable, we unlocked two achievements at the same time. Pockets with holes for dropping 10 items in 5 seconds, and Clumsy Escapist for breaking 7 objects in 5 seconds. Next, we head over to a mission in Edgewood Mansion, and throw an object out of bounds. This gives us Breakout. Then we head back to the tutorial and put every single item into the trash can for the cleaner achievement. For our last achievement, we need to create our own level. I did kind of cheese this and basically put a level with the bare minimum in it for an achievement. We don't even need to solve the room, we just save and unlock the achievement, make it yourself. Now there is still plenty of content in this game, along with the downloadable content and community content. My personal achievement is a bit more of an experiment this time, as I wanted to beat a community level. I wanted to see how the community levels differed from the developer levels, if they would be more difficult, if they introduced new features the developers didn't think of, and so on. I picked the room color wheel, as I like colors. We load in and notice the room is sectioned out into six areas. The real puzzle starts when I find the tub with wheels that when turned move pipes into place. After removing all the pipes into place, I noticed an object in the ground. Upon interacting with it, a barrel comes out of the ground and the barrel connects to the pipes. This floods the tub with water, raising blocks that were at the bottom. There are only four blocks we can interact with and they spell out the word flow. Upon doing this, we beat our first section and it fills the whole area with color. It would have been awesome if I was able to interact with all the blocks so that there were some decoys to trip me up. Next, we build a TARDIS, which personally I've never watched Doctor Who or whatever it's called. But after assembling, we can enter it and it literally teleports us. I did not see this feature once throughout my whole regular playthrough and I thought it was a super unique twist. After we teleported, we then get another twist playing a mini game of Frogger, which soft barriers like that were not introduced into the main game as well. On the other side, we get a key and head back, completing the second section. The next section, we drag a cloud onto a shelf of items, covering them in pink and making them interactable. We also color the streetlights which show us some letters. I got tripped up here as I knew the letters had something to do with how the objects are spelled and figured it'd be easier to come back to it. In the next area we find a pack of cupids with hearts on them. Once we align every cupid with their own heart, once we align every cupid with their own heart, they fire arrows coloring in the hearts and coloring in the section. The next section has an oven and pyramids with marshmallow sticks attached to them. Each section of the pyramid moves the marshmallow in a different way. Once again, another different feature that could have been used for some more physical puzzles instead of mental puzzles throughout the campaign. After navigating the fire from the oven, through multiple marshmallows, and onto the campfire, the section is complete. The last section we find a 1-up mushroom in a chest, and Mario pipes rise from the floor. I noticed once we put the mushrooms into the tiles, we could then see the pipes are connected in a specific way to spell out a number. After solving all three pipes, we put the number combination into the giant floor lock and color in the section. Now we return to the pink area, and I can't believe it. I completely missed that the sections have underscores to help determine which items go where. We sort the items out correctly and color in the last section. A rainbow trophy rises from the ground and we beat the room. Overall, I would say the room was fun with the different mechanics it had to show off but it did lack a lot of the mental puzzle aspects like the developer rooms had. Ideally, a room would have all types of puzzles, that way if you want to play with your friends and some are better at certain puzzles, everyone feels like they're contributing. Overall, I will definitely be interested in playing more community puzzles, as I'm sure there are some that have that nice balance. As always, that's all the achievements, homies. Let me know if you liked the video, 
if you have a harder challenge for me to pursue within reason or what game i should try to 100 next love you guys and i'll see you on the next one